Hello, I'm Sexton Towns, a fire captain with the Columbus Division of Fire in Columbus, Ohio. And we're going to do a walk around of our 2022 Enforcer Tiller Ladder. Uh, Columbus currently is a, has 16 ladder companies. Over half those ladder companies are tiller trucks, but this is the first enforcer cab we have. So we have a couple Pierce ladders in our fleet already, but like I said, this is the first enforcer. A couple things we've done differently with this truck that we didn't do with our past tiller trucks is we went with a shorter 10 inch bumper and we also did a recessed queue. That way, if we ever get any accident in the front, we don't have to worry about the queue side we're getting damaged. We already have the uh, electric sirens and the air horns recessed in the grill, so that's something new for us. One thing that we do with our ladders and our engine companies lately is we've been putting these grab rails up here, so if you had to stand up on the bumper to clean the windshield or anything like that, you have something to grab onto versus grabbing onto your windshield, instead of grabbing onto your windshield wipers and breaking those. The cool thing about the Enforcer Cab is it actually has one piece windshield, so it gives you ve better visibility. So, as we look at the driver's seat, the Enforcer cab is a lot different from our previous tiller cabs. Uh, just a little bit different setup, but our drivers will get used to it pretty fast. A couple of things that we do very specific to Columbus is we kind of move our one stop, two go, three switch. It was currently down here, so we moved it up here where the driver can actually see it and he don't have to worry about trying to get his hands pretty low to hit it when he really needed to. A couple other things that we did with this truck is we actually made sure that we kept multiple switches for emergency lighting. Um, sometimes in Columbus, we might be on an emergency scene and maybe we don't want to wake up the whole entire neighborhood with our emergency lights, but we do want some flashing lights in the rear so we can cut off all the emergency lights and just turn on the rear lights if we wanted to. We do have a small little screen in there for our rear backup camera. And then it also shows a camera over our outrigger. So that way when we're pulling up on the scene, we can actually see exactly where our outriggers are gonna go. So if we're trying to spot the jacks between cars or make sure that we're not gonna put the jack right on top of a curb. Uh, we also have the old school defroster fans on there. We see that with our other trucks that works pretty well. And then we still have the dual pull cords for the air horns and then you still can activate the air horn from your actual horn. A lot of the other things are just standards that come with the enforcer cap. So as we make our way to the rear of the cap in Columbus our minimal manpower for our truck companies is four firefighters or one firefighter or three firefighters and one officer 24 hours a day. But this truck can hold seven firefighters and their equipment. Uh, some days you might have six people in the truck company, but at minimum, we're always going to have four. So we also went with the Firecom wireless headset. That's one thing new to Columbus is the wireless headset, and we're liking what we see with those. One thing we're trying to do is keep a lot of the hand tools off the floor in the cab, which is a kind of bad habit of some firefighters have. So we put these transverse compartments for our longer tools and then our hand tools can go in here also and then we have a removable shelf so if we want to put our water can we can take this shelf out and our water can will sit right there. Like I said Columbus has 16 truck companies out of the 16 truck companies seven of these truck companies are extrication ladders which means they carry battery power spreaders cutters and rams and those ladder companies that are extrication ladders keep their extrication tools on this pull out tray. This tray you can access from both sides of the truck. And the cool thing about it is as you approach a vehicle accident, a lot of times the, you're gonna approach and these tools will be very close to the front of the cab so you don't have to walk a far distance to get the extrication tools that you need for the vehicle accident. And this truck, this tray pulls out from both sides of the truck, which is pretty cool. As you look at this truck, you see, man, tandem axle, right? Columbus is probably one of the few cities that still get tandem axle to the ladders. And we just like it because it puts more rubber on the road, gives us better, better braking. And in the wintertime, we don't never have an issue of getting these trucks stuck in any snow. We also have an inner axle differential lock, 
which is almost, we call it like four wheel drive. So if we ever have any issue with uh, um, going up a steep hill with snow or ice, we turn on that interactual differential lock and we just coast right up it. Like I mentioned to you before, inside the driver's seat, there's a small camera or a screen that shows the picture from this camera. And these are our stabilization cameras for the jacks. So it just lets you know exactly where your jack is going to come out. And we also opt it with a aluminum jack pad. Um, and it's just because some of our streets in Columbus um, are just black topping in the summertime. We noticed with the other jack pads that we're kind of de destroying the streets. So we want the aluminum jack pad just because we trust it. Uh, one cool thing about this truck is this is Columbus's first tiller ladder with a hydraulic generator. This truck has a 15 kW hydraulic generator that powers two 200 foot cord reels and they're both mounted in this compartment up high to give us the max amount of space we can have in this compartment but still having the reels in there. The cool thing about the reels being mounted up high in this transverse compartment is we can pull both reels from one side of the truck. So if you have a fire on this side of the truck and we need to pull both reels, I don't have to try to run that reel outside and under the truck. I can just grab it and I can pull them from both sides. As you notice, we have a circuit panel right here and we have a generator start switch right here. And this, and we also have two more remote start switches, one in the cab of the front of the truck and then one in the tiller box. One thing we do with all of our ladder trucks is we actually Put in the inlet so that way if our Honda or main onboard generator goes down, we can use our Honda generator, which are 6,500 watts, and we can plug them in right here to the truck, and then we have a transfer switch already spiked out. So that's all we gotta do is turn the switch, and now we got power going back to our two 200 foot quart reels. So Most of our ladder trucks in Columbus are set up so we can work off either side of the truck. So if I open up this compartment on this side, pretty much when you go to the other side, you'll see the same things. In Columbus, one thing that we do keep standard for our tiller ladders is all of our saws are carried in this compartment, which is usually gonna be the first compartment in front of the tiller wheels. It does have a nice pullout tray. And in Columbus, we carry about six chainsaws per ladder company, we carry three circular saws, and they'll be split up upon each side. As you notice, walking down the truck, you see a lot of the nice, pretty aluminum wheels with the red paint inside. Uh, we decided not to go with the trend of the painted wheels. We like the look of the aluminum wheels. Um, they look nice, clean, and professional. One thing that we did do different than a lot of other departments do is we actually moved our staircase to the tiller box to the rear of the truck. Our first tillers, we noticed that when the staircase was in front of this compartment, you kind of had to make a jog over into the tiller box so to reduce the risk of anybody falling and to make it just easier for our guys to get in, get their seat belts on and get out the door we put our staircase at the end of the truck. So that way when I climb up it, I just go straight into the tiller box. So as we sit in the tiller box, you notice we put a couple different controls up here. I spoke to you before about having the generator start and stop switch up here. And then we also have controls for all of our floodlights. On this truck we have three floodlights on each side of the truck and then we have one in the rear and one in the front. We noticed just through training that it's a lot easier for the tillerman to start the generator and turn on the floodlights and that takes one less thing that the driver has to worry about when he's responding to the incident. Also we went with an air conditioner back here in the tiller box. We know traditionally normally the air conditioner was keeping the doors open but with Pierce they want us to keep the doors shut so we put an air conditioner in a tiller box and we went for an electric heater versus a diesel driven heater. As moving on to the rear of the truck, this is where we keep all of our ground ladders. 
In Columbus, we take truck work seriously, so we carry 187 feet of ground ladders. Our tallest ladder being a 35 foot extension ladder, two section, all the way down to a 10 foot folding attic ladder. One thing that we always spec out, which makes our job a lot easier when pulling these ladders on off the truck, is we put rollers inside of here. So when we grab a ladder, we can just sling it out, and this ladder will sling out with ease while having these rollers back here. And like I said, we take truck work very serious, so we like to carry a lot of ground ladders. Uh, as you walk around the truck, you will notice that we have some coat hooks on some of our grab handles, um, just so that way we won't scratch up the paint of the truck um, by guys trying to find a place to hang their coat. <clears throat> this is a full size compartment. This is where the tiller firefighter will keep his SCBA and he also keep his hand tools here along with a flashlight that we mounted right here. So that way when he comes out the tiller box, if he wants to, he can grab his hand tools, throw in his pack and go straight to work. As you notice up top, we have uh, a pre-piped waterway. All till ladders in the city of Columbus have pre-piped waterways, but this is our first pre-piped waterway that has a two and a half inch discharge off the side of it. So, and that'll make it easier for this ladder company, which is serving downtown, if they have to have, use this ladder for a standpipe to get into a parking garage, or even if they have a high rise incident, maybe on the fifth floor, and they want to use this just as their standpipe it makes it a lot easier for them. One thing you also notice as you look at the tip of the ladder is you'll notice that we put floodlights on the base section of the aerial. Uh, we don't have a mass light on this truck, so if we wanted to get light high, obviously we've got our tip lights, but also we have the floodlights on the base section of the aerial. So when we got our firefighters going to the roof for vertical ventilation, majority of the time, these lights are going to be shining down in the front of the structure, which is pretty cool. We have our spectrum scene lights right here. <clears throat> like I said, we got three of those on each side. And pretty much this side of the truck is pretty much a mirror of the opposite side of the truck. So that way, no matter what side of the street the fire is on, you can work off either side of the truck pretty easy. All right, walking down this way, one thing you'll probably notice is that we have a couple different um, gauges over here. We decided to put a gauge right here just so when you're operating the outriggers, I don't have to come all the way over here to see if my truck is level. So I can just be at the compartment and I can look up there and make sure that my truck is level. Also, while we're looking up there, one thing I want to point out is that we do have a double hook roof ladder mounted on the bed section of the aerial so that way if we do need to use a roof ladder or we're doing vertical ventilation it's already up there and it's easy for us to grab. Another thing that we did spec on this truck is we do have remote tip controls so that way if we want to there's uh, controls at the tip so the firefighter can move the aerial all the way at the tip of the ladder. As we make our way to the pedestal one thing that we ensured that we did was we made sure that our intercom system was mounted inside the pedestal so that way it will be out of the weather. And then, as you notice, we have the command center that the Pierce offers. And like I said, we do have a <clears throat> remote tip control. So obviously, if I can put a firefighter under the tip, I can have him raise and lower the ladder as long as I'm holding this switch. One thing we did opt for on this truck is a remote control for our nozzle, which is on the end of the stick. That way, if we wanted to, we can be down on the ground and moving the nozzle left, right, up, down, and change it from fog string to straight string to make sure that we're hitting, we got water going where we wanted to go. So that's one cool feature about this rig. This is our saw box. It just makes it easier for our firefighters to go from the pedestal to the roof. We usually keep two chainsaws in there. And as you're walking up to the front of the cab of the truck, obviously it looks just like the other side. Uh, one thing I will say is that we make sure that on our tiller ladders we order, order barrier doors and we make sure that the doors come open to 90 degrees to give our firefighters the most space to get in and out the truck. 
I'd like to thank you all for listening and walking with me looking at our brand new 2022 Enforcer tandem axle to the ladder for the city of Columbus. Thank you.